Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth here, and we are going to get into lesson three here in Unit 7 in AP Precalc and go over how to solve trig equations, all right, using the inverses that we learned in the last section. So we're going to be using inverse sine and inverse cosine and inverse tangent and apply the restrictions that we talked about in the previous lesson. Okay, we're going to do this both algebraically and graphically to put the, the two concepts together. So here we go. All right, we're going to start off uh, by reading the problem. So example one here, we have to solve this equation, 2 times sine squared x minus 1 equals 0 on the domain here from 0 to 2 pi, which means, okay, our solutions have to be between 0 and 2 pi, um, greater than 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi. So let's interpret this. This is called the domain right here. And the domain, oops, uh, means that the solutions that we're looking for have to live inside here between 0 and 2 pi. So the solutions must be uh, basically from 0 to 2 pi. So it must be, I'm going to say between, but it could be, it could be all the way up to 2 pi, greater than 0 and less than 2 pi. So between 0, okay, and 2 pi. That's just the basic idea. Greater than 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. All right, now the equation here, 2 sine squared x minus 1 equals 0, can be solved algebraically, uh, believe it or not, without a calculator on this one. But we're going to do it graphically uh, as well. So let me write the equation. So we have 2... It's too thick here. Okay, so I'm just adjusting my pens here in the one note. All right, so 2 times sine squared x... All right, minus 1 is equal to 0. When is that true? Okay, what we want to do is we want to isolate the trig function. So we're going to just do some basic algebra here. So think simple. We're going to add 1, like nothing too shattering right there. All right, so we're going to take uh, 2 sine squared x and set that equal to 1. My goal is to isolate the sine function. Just like you would in any algebra problem, you isolate the variable. In this case, the variable is a function, right? It's the sine of x function. It's being squared. So we want to isolate the function. So here, at this point, we want to divide by 2, all right? So you can isolate your function. And what do we get? We get sine squared of x is equal to 1 half. And guess what? We've seen that ratio on the special right triangles. The question is, which one do we need? Well, before we go there and before we graph we have to square root both sides okay the square root of a or when when a variable is being squared we usually square root so i'm going to do that but we got to be careful here and when you square root the right side you got to include that plus or minus symbol so we have two possible solutions there and the square root of sine squared x is just sine uh, sine of x so we have sine of x is equal to plus or minus uh, let me see, the square root of 1 half, and so that's the square root of 1 uh, divided by the square root of 2. So the square root of 1 is 1, obviously, so I'm just going to write a 1 here over rad 2. And as you guys know, that's the same thing as plus or minus rad 2 over 2, which is a familiar ratio. We've seen that on the 45, 45, 90. So I'm going to say that's the plus or minus equal to root 2 over 2. Now this actually gives us two equations, right? One where it's positive, one where it's negative. So I'm going to split it up just so you can understand what's going on. So we need to solve the equation sine x equals rad 2 over 2. And we need to solve the other one here where sine x is equal to negative rad 2 over 2. All right, then we got to put our previous concepts in. All right, so I'm going to go off to the side here. All right, I'm going to draw the 45, 45, 90. All right, let's just do what I always do here, draw the special rights. That's why we learned them. So the sides are congruent here on the 45, 45, 90. It's isosceles. And using the Pythagorean theorem, you can get root 2 on the hypotenuse. And as you guys know already, the sine of 45 degrees, which is pi fours, is equal to rad 2 over 2. You know that. Okay? So we know that. So when now we've got to go back to, back to basics. Okay? So when you take, when you solve for an angle, and again, x right here is an angle. Okay. When you take the sine of an angle, you get a ratio. But whatever you're taking a sine of is an angle. So when you solve for x, you're solving for an angle. That's what you have to understand. All right. So x here is actually found by taking the inverse sine of this ratio, rad 2 over 2. 
and x is an angle. So you need to be asking yourself the sine of what angle gives you rad 2 over 2. And if you look up here in the upper right on that triangle here, we know it's got to be 45 degrees or pi force. That's a little further than that. We just don't have one solution here. We actually have two. Uh, so <clears throat> the reason why is because this is a positive number. So I'm going to put a plus sign right here. All right, it's positive, and you got to ask yourself, where is sine positive? And it's positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So we actually have two results here. We have one in quadrant 1, and we have another one in quadrant 2. All right, so we, with our first solution here, yeah, okay, x can be pi force. We're in radians now. Oh, and by the way, that reminds me, in the beginning here, the domain was 0 to 2 pi. That means you need to put your calculator in radian mode and re write all answers in radians, okay? So radians here, not degrees. Okay, if it said 0 to 360 degrees, well, then I'd respond in degrees. So the domain here tells you how you should respond with your answers. So I'm not going to respond with 45 degrees. I'm going to respond with pi force. And that's your reference angle in quadrant 1. And we know that another angle in quadrant 2, which is found by taking pi minus pi force, which is 3 pi force, is the angle that gives the same ratio. Okay, the sine of 3 pi force is also root 2 over 2. Okay, so the way you get that again, uh, if you take pi and subtract the reference angle, pi force, you get 3 pi force, and that's a quadrant 2 angle. And we know that the sine of 3 pi force is also rad 2 over 2. Just look at your unit circle. Okay, so we have two solutions now. So... How do you know uh, how many total solutions there are? We're going to talk about that. So we're going to connect that with the graph here in a minute. Let me just finish the algebraic portion. Okay, so here now sine of x equals negative rad 2 over 2, and sine's negative here. So I'm going to highlight that. It's negative, and that puts us in quadrants 3 and 4 because we know sine's negative there. So we're going to have an answer in quadrant 3 and an answer in quadrant 4. So here, what we want to do is we want to take the inverse sine of this negative number here, so the inverse sine of negative rad 2 over 2, and that puts us in quadrants 3 and 4 because sine's negative there. So we got to find the angles that give us the sine ratio of, of negative rad 2 over 2, but one has to be in quadrant 3, and the other one has to be quadrant 4. So there's different ways you can do this. You can just flat out memorize the unit circle. And you should know, okay? Or you can take your reference angle, which is quadrant one. So let's, let's go over here. This it, pi force is called, as you guys know, is called your reference angle. And all you have to do is add pi to it to get to quadrant three. Okay, that's it. So here it's going to be pi plus pi force, which is equal to five pi force. That's, that's quadrant three. The quadrant 4 angle, you take 2 pi minus your reference angle. So 2 pi minus your reference angle. And guess what? That's equal to 7 pi force. So we actually have four solutions. Okay, so four solutions. All right, what are they? X could be equal to your quadrant 1 angle, your quadrant 2 angle, 3 pi force, your quadrant 3 angle, which is 5 pi force, and then your quadrant 4 angle, which is 7 pi force four solutions. Okay, now let's graph. So what we do at this point is we take the two functions that we're dealing with right here, these two, and we actually graph the sine function and we uh, interpret this as a system. So what I'm going to do is my parent function sine x, so I'm going to graph that first. All right, so I'm going to adjust the axes. You got to scale them, right? I'm going to do what we always do. This is the mastery right here. So we're going to go I'm going to go up to units so you can, like, we can plot this better so I know where 0.5 is, and you'll see here in a minute why that's going to be important. And then I'm going to go over uh, 2 pi radians because guess what? The period of sine is 2 pi, so I'm going to go out 8 units, call this 2 pi. This is pi, pi halves, and 3 pi halves. Okay, so once you scale your axes, you're good to go, and then you start plotting. Okay, so sine of 0 is 0. Sine of pi is 1, sine of pi is 0, sine of 3 has pi is negative 1, sine of 2 pi is back to 0, and then you start graphing. Okay, and you, okay, you curve it. Uh-oh, that's not too good. 
So I got to curve it pretty well here. No, 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 no. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, there we go. All right, so there's your sine function right there. Sine of x, there's your parent. And now what we want to do is we want to graph uh, and treat this as a system. So when I when I look at this right here, uh, sine of x equals rad 2 over 2, my first function is y1 on the left side, so y1 is sine x. And my second function is rad 2 over 2. And you need to know the decimal there. Uh, so if you don't know it, you can approximate it. Root 2 is what? 1.4 divided by 2 is about 0.7. All right, so this is 0 0.7. If you didn't know that, what you do is you just go to Desmos here and you type it in. So just take it rad 2 and then you divide it by 2 and you'll see that it's about 0.7. Okay, so there we go. And then what you want to do is you want to graph that. So we have to graph y equals uh, 0.7, which is a horizontal line. So I'm going to... I'm going to switch colors here. I could graph these in red, actually. So let me see. If this is 0.5, then 0.7 is up here. Okay, so I'm going to graph a horizontal line at 0.7. So right about right about there, so y equals 0.7. And then in the other one here, my other function, y2, y2 has to be equal to negative uh, rad 2 over 2 or negative 0 0.7, which is down here below here. So if this is negative 0.7, I'm going to draw another horizontal line right here, and y equals negative rad 2 over 2, which is the same thing as I just said. It's about negative 0.7. So negative rad 2 over 2 here, and this is y is equal to rad 2 over 2. Oh, God, my, my handwriting is not the greatest right at the moment, so bear with me here. There we go. Okay, and then as you know from previous classes like Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 and all that, wherever the intersect is the solution to your system. So we have, we have multiple intersection points here. So we have here, this is a first solution. All right, we'll call that x1. Guess what? That's in quadrant 1. And then we have another s s solution here. Guess what? Between pi halves and pi, that's my second solution. But guess what? That's quadrant 2. And then down here between pi and 3 halves pi, well, it gets my third solution, x3, and that's in quadrant 3. Okay, and guess what? The next solution is between 3 halves pi and 2 pi. We'll call that x4. Right, and that's my that's between three s pi and two pi, and that's quadrant four. So we have four intersection points. That tells me that we have four solutions. So if I graph this first before I even found all these answers, then we would have uh, we would have known. Now just to to verify this, we're going to do something cool, and just show you what's going on on the graph. Okay, so I'm gonna. Go up here, let me see, do, do. go into the new blank graph. This is Desmos here. Okay, I don't have a T84 app on the iPad, so I'm going to use the Desmos app. All right, it's amazing. Okay, I'm going to type in y equals sine x. Watch what happens. Well, you got to type it in correctly. All right, so equals, right? Okay, it's worth get, get on it. Okay, so, and we want to adjust their axes, so click on your wrench, and let's go from uh, zero to... Let's rescale the x-axis, 0 to 2 pi, and then step it out at, uh, let's do, let's do pi half, so pi divided by 2, that'd be good enough. There we go. All right, now you type in y equals, okay, rad 2 over 2, so rad 2, okay, divided by 2, and then you type in another one, y equals, negative rad 2 over 2, so negative rad 2, all right, divided by 2. And you can take a look at the intersection points. Okay, so here we go. So this one here, uh, let's click on these intersection points. Look at that. We have intersection of pi force at 3 pi force. Oh, come on. Pi force, 3 pi force, 5 pi force, and 7 pi force. See, there you go. And then uh, I would screenshot this and just bring it into your lesson, like we always do here, so you can keep track of what's going on. All right, so I'm going to do that here, just for funsies right now. Always record your work so you can like fully understand what's going on. Okay, so let me bring that in. 
And just so you can see how what I did algebraically and also uh, using Desmos here kind of matches, right? Because it better match because that means if it didn't match, then I'd be full of it. But okay, hopefully I'm not. All right, so there you go. Uh, there's the verification. We have four intersection points right there. And that's how you can verify your answers. And that's how you can actually do it graphically, too. We could have uh, skipped the algebraic process and go right to Desmos. But <laughs> obviously, we don't want to do that, right? We want to be able to do things by hand because that's what they were going to require you to do on their, your, uh, your AP test. All right. You got to know your stuff, okay? So you don't need the calculator. I was just using that to validate. All right, let's get some more experience here. I'm just going to do a few more examples, and I'm not going to go through this entire thing all in one video. It's going to be too long, so I'll break it up into two parts. All right, so let's take a look at another one here. Check, check this out. So we've got uh, example two. We've got cosine squared. All right, uh, x minus 3 cosine x minus 4 equals 0. You guys, that is a quadratic equation, okay? So this is a called a quadratic. And in Algebra 1 and 2, you learn how to uh, solve these guys, and you solve them by factoring. So what we want to do is factor this. So here we go, factor into two binomials. So let's do it. So uh, you got to think what, you know, what term right here, what times what gives you cosine squared? Well, guess what? Cosine x times cosine x gives you cosine squared x. Okay. So cosine x times cosine x gives you cosine squared x. And then what we need is we need factors of negative 4 that multiply negative 4. So that factors meaning what two numbers multiply negative 4 and that add to negative 3. Okay, I know that negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. I know negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So my factors are negative 4 and 1. I'm going to put those in. All right, again, factors of negative 4 that add to th negative 3. Okay, so negative, uh, negative 4 times 1 gives you negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1 gives you negative 3. That's what I was talking about. That's what you were taught in Algebra 1 and hopefully got good at it in Algebra 2. All right, so now what we do is we set each equal to 0. So your first step here is to factor. Second step is to use the zero product rule and set each equal to 0. So form two equations. So here we go. So cosine x minus 4, when is that equal to 0? And then the second one is when is cosine x plus 1 equal to 0? So that's your step two, and then you got to solve each. Well, this one's a simple one. So got cosine x equals 4. And you got to ask yourself, the cosine of what angle gives you 4? And uh, you have to remember that the range of cosine is negative 1 to 1. Okay, so the range of cosine, all right, is negative 1 to 1, min to max. Okay, so the cosine function and the sine function have a min and a max. All right, the minimum is negative 1, the maximum is 1, and so this is impossible, okay? So this is out of the range. 4 is out of the range, which implies that this equation has no solution, all right? No solution here. Try it on, try it on Desmos here. Uh, inverse cosine of 4, watch this. Just do it for funsies right now. All right, so if I take the inverse cosine, watch this. Uh, 4, watch what happens, undefined, because it's out of the range. Okay, so if you if you try it here, x equals the inverse cosine of negative, this is cosine here, of 4 here, it's undefined because, as I just showed you, it's out of the range. You can only take the inverse cosine of a number between negative 1 and 1. That's what I'm saying. On the other side, there, there might be a solution, right? So if you subtract 1, do something really simple here, we get cosine x equals negative 1. And so x is equal to the inverse cosine of negative 1. So you got to think on the unit circle here, where is, is cosine equal to negative 1? Cosine of what angle? So on the unit circle here, okay, that's a, not the greatest unit circle, but just visualize. <laughs> Okay, so over here on this side, this is at negative 1, comma, 0. And we know that this is at pi. This is 0. 
pi halves, pi over there, down at the bottom, three halves pi, oops, three halves pi, and back all the way around to two pi. So we know that the cosine of pi, just by looking at the unit circle, is negative one. So this has to be pi, and we have a solution here, okay, in radians. Okay, uh, to do, to do, to do, so we have one single solution, okay, only one solution. Sometimes you get one, sometimes you get two, sometimes you get more. It depends on how the equation is and then how it's defined and what the restrictions are. Okay, uh, ta -da, ta -da. that's it. Let's do a few more. Let's get some experience here. And then I'm going to pause the video after that. We'll do this application part in my part two of the video. All right, so solve for x on the domain from 0 to 2 pi. That means we have to be in radians. So remember, <clears throat> this is called the domain. Okay, and if they give you radians, then you have to express your answer in radians. And we want to solve sine x times tangent x equals 3 sine x. Holy smoke, how do you do this? Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's think about it here. So what we want to do is we, we notice we have two different functions here. And we have sine x in common between the two terms. So like in algebra 1 and 2, what we want to do is set this equation at 0 and then... Since we have a common factor, you were taught in the previous courses to factor that common factor out. So whenever you see a common factor, like sine x here, get it all to one side, set it equal to zero, factor out the common factor, which is called the GCF. So the first step on this one here is to subtract 3 sine x. Okay, obviously the right side is zero now, okay? Left side, what does it look like? Well, we start off with sine x times tangent of x, right? We just subtracted 3 sine x, and this whole thing's equal to 0 because we, well, 3 sine x minus 3 sine x is 0. Okie dokie, what is in common? All right, so let's, let's take a look at this. Okay, let's highlight the common factor, which is obviously sine x. We want to factor that out. All right, uh, let's write that down off to the side. So you want to factor out the common factor. Factor out, you know, the sine x. It's called the GCF, the greatest common factor. So I'm going to start off with that. So sine x times times what? Okay. If you factor out the sine x out of the first term, you obviously have tangent x remaining. And if you factor out the sine x out of the second term, you obviously have the 3 remaining. All right. And then you do what we just did earlier here. Okay, once you have factored form, you set equal, each equal to zero and you solve. All right, so we're going to learn from prior experience. So step one, we, we set equal to zero. Actually, let me write that down. Uh, so step one, we set equal to zero. Step two, we factored out to GCF. Step three, we set the factors equal to zero. So set, okay, factors. These binomials are called factors uh, equal to zero. So now we have two equations, sine x, when is that equal to 0? And then the other equation, we have tangent x minus 3 equal to 0. So you got to ask yourself, when is sine x equal to 0? Well, you got to go back to the unit circle again. And sine x equal to 0 at 0 and pi. Okay, so if you look at uh, the coordinates on the unit circle right here, the sine of 0 is 0, and then right up here, we have sine of pi equals 0 because we're looking at the y coordinates. So we have two solutions here. We have 0 and pi for the first equation. Uh, and the second equation, we've got to isolate the tangent function. So that's pretty simple, straightforward. Add 3. And you get tangent x equals 3. And now you've got to take the inverse tangent. And this is where your calculator comes in, our first calculator example. So here, x is equal to the inverse tangent, okay, of 3. So notice that 3 is a positive number, so I'm going to put a plus sign here. And you got to ask yourself, where is tangent positive? Okay, so I'm going to sidetrack for a second here, and just to go over this concept again. So I'm going to go back and do um, review a concept here. So I'm going to draw the four quadrants. Okay, so quadrant 1 quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 3, and then quadrant 4. Okay, so back to basics here. Watch this, okay? 
Now, we know that in, in um, quadrant one, sine and cosine are both positive. So sine is positive, cosine of theta is positive, and tangent of theta, well, guess what? That's defined to be sine over cosine in a positive divided by positive is a positive. So tangent's positive in this quadrant two. In quadrant two, okay, sine of theta is positive, cosine of theta is negative, and if you take a positive divided by a negative, you get a negative. So tangent is negative in quadrant two. Quadrant three, we know that sine is negative, cosine is negative, and a negative divided by a negative is positive, so cos uh, tangent of theta is positive. All right, so in, in our problem here, we, want, we have to take the inverse tangent of three, which is a positive number, so we have to get an angle in quadrants one and three. But let me finish what I was saying. Uh, in quadrant four, Okay, we know that sine is negative, obviously, because it's down, right? Y coordinates are negative there. Cosine is positive because you go right, and the X coordinates are positive. And then tangent of theta, that's negative divided by positive, which has to be a negative. So tangent's negative in quadrants two and four, it's positive in quadrants one and three. So right here, we are looking, all right, for two angles in one and three. So I'm gonna write that out, quadrant one, and then quadrant three. So what should they be? So we're gonna take the inverse tangent, so let's split screen and let's go to a calculator time. If you have your TID-4, take it out and use it. But make sure you put that in radian mode. If you use a TID-4, put it in radian mode. Here, click on the wrench in the upper right. If you're in Desmos here, make sure it's on radians. If degrees are highlighted, you're in degrees. If you click on radians, it's in radians. So make sure you're in radian mode whether you're using Desmos or the TID-4, it doesn't matter. All right, let's take a look at the tangent, inverse tangent function. We're gonna take the inverse tangent of, of three here, which is 1.249. Okay, radians. So 1.249 radians. Now, how do you get from quadrant one to three? Well, that's easy. To get from one to three, you add 180, or pi, pi radians right here. So to get the quadrant three angle, you take your answer in quadrant one, which is your reference angle. Okay, here's your reference angle, 1.249, and you have to add pi to it to get to quadrant three. So here we go, it's 1.249, and then you have to add pi, and that'll give you about 4.391. So 4.391 radians, okay? We're in radian mode. And that's in quadrant three, and or quadrant, yeah, quadrant three. You know that because uh, pi radians is 3.14, and 4.39 is bigger than that. It's in quadrant three. All right, and that's how you handle that bad boy. Okay, example three. One more, and then we'll get into some applications in my next part of the video. Now, this equation four is similar to equation three right here. Notice that we have two sine x equals cosine x. Right here, the domain is from zero to two pi. We got to get uh, you got to get the equation set equal to zero and get creative here. So I'm going to subtract cosine right here. So subtract cosine x, and then watch what happens. We get two sine x right minus cosine x is equal to zero. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Let's not do that. We I, I just thought of an easier way. Scratch that, okay? Do the flux capacitor, go back, take that back. <clears throat> okay, uh, before we do that, we let's create one function, all right? We want one function only. We don't want two different functions. We want one function only, and that's easy to do if we get creative here. If we, instead of subtracting by cosine, let's divide by cosine and form a new function. Watch this, this is cool. So let's divide by cosine x. What, what happens if we do that? Hmm, we create one function only. We get two tangent of x, right, is equal to one. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, look at that. We divide by cosine, sine x divided by cosine x is tangent x. We know that by definition. That's what we started with in the unit. Okay, now divide by two. We have tangent x equals one half. All right, the tangent ratio of one half doesn't exist on the 30, 60, 90, and the, uh, the 45, 45, 90, so this is a calculator problem. 
All right. And we got to think, okay, based upon what I just said earlier, tangents positive in quadrants one and three. And guess what? We got to find an angle there. Okay, so what we need to do is take the inverse tangent now, which is why we, that was our topic of our previous lesson here, right? And we're looking for answers in quadrant one and another one in quadrant three because this is a positive number. Okay, tangents positive in quadrants one and three. All right, so let's uh, get Desmos going again because it's a calculator problem. There we go. All right, and now we're going to take the inverse tangent. Check this out. Uh, one half. So just type it in. Boom. All right, what do we get? And we're in radians here. So we get 0.464 radians. So x is equal to 0.464 radians. Okay. We're in radian mode now. Radian mode. So again, set your calculator and Desmos by using the wrench in the upper right or in the... Um, you have to learn how to do it on your calculator as well. Set it radian mode, okay? Uh, okay, and then to get from 1 to 3, okay, all you do is add pi. Okay, so let's note that. From 1 to 3, simply add pi. So I'm going to take 0.464, add pi. Notice that I'm writing down my method here, all right? To go from 1 to 3, you always add pi. Uh, or if you're in quadrant three, to get back to one, you subtract by. I mean, it's, it's the same idea. So here we go. I'm just going to add pi. There we go. And you get 3.605. So 3.605 radians, which is obviously in quadrant three, because if you just think about it right here, pi is 3.14, as you guys know. And 3.6 radians is probably right here. This is this is 3.605 radians. Okay, so it's a quadrant three angle. Okay, just drawing a little sketch so you can see it. All right, and that's how it's done, you guys. And all you need to do now is go through some application problems. And we'll do that in my part two video here. But those are the basics of how you solve equations. And of course, there's a lot more different equations that you have to get used to. Believe it or not, four examples is not enough. Uh, you to really get a good experience and to be able to solve all the different type of cases. But I did go over some basics, okay? And so I'm gonna end it here. And, and then if you need help on the second one here, the Ferris wheel problem, which is the application of what I'm talking about, which is a really cool problem, go into my part, part two video and I'll talk about example number five. Okay, you guys take care. My name is Mr. Ainsworth here. I work at Great Oak High School in Temecula, California. And uh, been here since the beginning. So hopefully that helped you out. We'll take, uh, and hopefully I will see you in class. Take care. Bye bye.